Coming up on MCTV this week, a well-known Monmouth professor gives his last lecture in the candlelight vigil for sexual assault and domestic violence awareness. This week starts now. Good evening and welcome to MCTV. For Tori Philbin, I'm Alistair Ramsey. Now, the sea was empty last Friday in Patty Auditorium for Dr. William Urban's last lecture. Julie Graff has more on the story. After 49 years of teaching in the Monmouth College History Department, Dr. Urban gave his farewell lecture entitled, The People I Have Known. I've stayed mainly because of the people. Now, it's also a great community. It's a great place to raise children. Uh, it's affordable. Uh, we don't get paid as much as at other schools, but you can afford to buy a house. Uh, you, can af you can afford to uh, get around to any place you need to. I, I ride my bicycle almost every place in town. Uh, if I were in Chicago, I would end up driving 30 or 40 miles to my place of employment. I don't have to do this here. Urban spoke about the wide variety of colleagues and friends who have impacted his professional career here at Monmouth College. Urban joined the faculty in 1966 along with legendary professors whose names now adorn many buildings on campus, such as Gracie Peterson, Garrett Thiessen, and Bobby Wolf. There's tremendous opportunities for a teacher like uh, teaching abroad. I've taught in uh, Italy, Yugoslavia, Czech Republic, Estonia, many trips to Germany for six months at a time. And I'm not bored to death by teaching the same subject over and over again. If I had to teach only three or four medieval history courses, uh, I would have not been very happy. But as you could, you could tell by some of the students, I uh, have, a, have a larger range. I have learned a lot from him about being a loyal supporter of a college, of a department. He is a really great colleague. He cares a lot about the people who, with whom he works and he supports them in so many different ways. And you learn really quickly that to be a good colleague, from watching Bill, you learn really quickly that to be a good colleague, uh, you should support your department members, support your colleagues, uh, pay attention to them, get to know their families, and, uh, and always be loyal to them and speak well of them. And so it's, it's been a real privilege to be a, to be a colleague of this. Phi Alpha Theta and the History Club sponsored Dr. Urban's farewell lecture. On Friday, Monmouth College took back the night. I asked them to take back the night is an international event with the mission of ending sexual violence in all forms. Monologues of sexual assault victims were read, highlighting assault in its different forms. The senior capstone of the women's studies minor organized this event. In the past, this course has organized slut walks, but this year, they decided to do something different. The slut walk can have a bad meaning to it because of the name, so take back the night is... Uh, more laid back, but also the same intensity. My name is Kane. I and a pledge to stop and say no more to sexual violence. To end the night, students and faculty gathered outside the Huff Center to light candles to give a moment of silence for those who have been sexually assaulted while the bagpipes are being played. It was just really a great time. It was emotional, but we also did a lot of chants to, you know, give tribute to those who have been sexually assaulted. So it was great. For more information, you can visit takebackthenight.org. Spectrum Intercultural and Spiritual Groups brought a minister of music to campus to talk about coming out as a Christian. Katie Peterson discussed her life through story and song, highlighting her struggles from coming out as an active Christian, feeling separated from both her family and the church, to returning to ministry. Peterson also gave words of advice to students that are going through the phases of coming out. Whatever it is that's going on, you're fabulous, and hang in there, and keep asking questions, and know that there is room in the heart of divine for everyone, and that you are created perfect, whole, and complete. And if Spectrum meets every Wednesday at 4 in the CSB. Last Friday, student-led committee Social Issues and Outreach organized an awareness discussion in the Patty Auditorium of CSB. The Student Support and Counseling Services, Intercultural Life Association, and Teaching and Learning Center held an interactive discussion to bring awareness and sensitivity to invisible disabilities here at Monmouth College. These disabilities are not obvious at first sight. 
Students participated in exercises that mimicked how some people with disabilities experience the world with the purpose of increasing empathy and awareness within the Monmouth community. So we, of the 4% of, of students that we have on campus, very few of them have mobility impairments or um, uh, visual impairments that would be obvious to somebody who just walked into a room. More of them have ADD, ADHD, Asperger's, so there are they're mostly students that if you sat next to them in class you probably would realize that they had a disability. It's something that's personally affected me um, and everyone that's spoken and helped with tonight's event it's, and it's something we we want people to feel comfortable about and so I wanted to share my experience tonight to show people that it's not something to be ashamed of. If you are a student and you feel that you need help, you can contact Dana Roof in the Academic Support Office. Haikus and high IQs combined at the annual faculty poetry reading to celebrate National Poetry Month. Last Wednesday, professors from different departments introduced and read their favorite pieces of poetry. According to Professor David Wright from the English Department, who hosted this poetry event, this is designed to show that poetry doesn't live only in the English department. I think anyone who appreciates culture should be here. I mean, I brought a friend who's a science major, and I know she enjoyed it, so I think that it should be something that anyone from any discipline would enjoy. The event was hosted by Bridget Draxler, Lee McGann, and David Wright. Taking a look at some events on campus this week, ASAP hosts this After Hours Old Hollywood Edition tonight at 8. Find out what they will be doing in Lower Level Stockdale. Raisa's and the First Street Armory is celebrating Cinco de Mayo a little early this Saturday. Come to Monmouth Park from 12 to 4 p.m. and enjoy real Mexican food, traditional dances, and a DJ. There will also be free games for children. And Yamoja is sponsoring a fashion show at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Strut your stuff in the Wells Theater. In sports, the Fighting Scots women's golf team plays host to the final home tournament of the year. We'll have the highlights next. Last Thursday afternoon, the Lady Scots golf team hosted Augustana and Benedictine of Springfield for their annual MC Invitational. With the fourth best 18-hole score in program history at Gibson Woods, the Scots won the meet with a 360. That is nearly 60 strokes better than second place Augustana. Annie Sandrick and Corey Crawford battled for medalist honors as Sandrick's 86th edge Crawford by two strokes. Scots went to Augustana last weekend for their final tournament of the year. They came away tied for third. Coming off an impressive weekend that saw two wins, two personal records, and a handful of top five finishes, the Scots track and field team went back to the track to practice for the Midwest Conference meet. Last week, three Scots finished in the top five in hurdles. Stephanie O'Dell placed second in women's 400 hurdles, while Vaughn Gensler and John O'Connor place fourth and fifth, respectively. The Scots' strongest event is the 4x4 four four with Ramius Folks, Adam Parr, Ethan Reschke, and Matthew Trainer. The Fighting Scots maintain their rank as fourth in the nation and have been improving despite being outside for only a month. The Scots have adapted quickly. You have no variables due to the weather, so outdoor you just got to take what you can get. Um, and for instance, if it's raining and windy and cold indoors, that's not a big deal. It's 
has no effect, but outdoor, it has all the effect in the world. You know, you can't, you can't pick and choose, but days like today would make it really nice for a track meet. The Fighting Scots will have one more tune-up this weekend before the conference meet, and that's the Fighting Scots Invitational on May 2nd. Last Wednesday, the wind was not in their favor as Scots Baseball hosted Robert Morris in a game that came down to the final inning. The Scots started off strong against Robert Morris with pitcher Logan Van Woosteen striking out Robert Morris's first batter with ease. Afterwards, the Scots went up by one when sophomore Ryan Sparks easily jogs home after a ground ball. And from that point, it was back and forth battle between both teams, but it went the way of the Scots to beat Robert Morris 7-6. The Scots face Cornell this weekend in a doubleheader at home. That's it for sports. Here are your scores for this week. That'll do it for MCTV this week. I'm David Beidel. And I'm Alistair Ramsey. Make sure to tune in next week for our final installment of MCTV for the semester. And I'm Tori Philbin. You can also visit us on the web at monmouthcollege.edu slash MCTV. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.